Welcome to Crush Your Mountain. This is one of our personal growth episodes, and I am so thrilled to have with me Miss Raven Michelle Harris. I had the privilege and the pleasure of starring on her program just recently, Reset with Raven. So if you go to Apple, jump on Apple, and find Reset with Raven, and you'll find a host of individuals there that are imparting information and insight, and you'll find me too. Nevertheless, let me tell you about this fantastic young woman. End suffering and expose the lies in fear and fallacy are Raven M. Harris's uh, determination. After experiencing success in a, on paper in her, in, in her mid-20s, Raven realized she was unfulfilled and living a life of going through the motions. Then 2020 happened, and she made the choice to reset her life both personally and professionally. She's now inspiring others to activate their dreams and live life full. She calls herself a journalist for the people. But now her other statement is this, life is about decisions. Choosing what's right for you is the best choice you can make. So we're going to talk a little bit about her and how ending suffering and, and exposing the lies and fears and fallacies that, uh, that, that she's come across, how that's affected her, but how that's affected you and me. Why is it that anyone at any age can and should consider where they are in life? And do they need a reset? But this is going to be an amazing conversation. It's a wonderful to have to have such a beautiful person to share the screen with. Raven Michelle Harris, welcome to Crush Your Mountain. Thank you, Henry, so much for having me. I'm so happy to have you. So, you know, tell us about your crossroads how you got to the point, because you, you had, had kind of climbed the corporate ladder for a bit, didn't you? I did, I did. I'm very grateful for my career in healthcare administration. I did receive a, a, a lot of success on paper, is what I like to call it, where I was in the C-suite in my 20s. And I remember if I go back to just being a, a young, young girl of like my dreams, I, I love theater. I love acting. I love the arts. I love performing. I love biographies, autobiographies, documentaries. I love information and I love how it can be displayed in artistic ways. And throughout life, you know, I, I was um, surrounded by some naysayers. Um, I was told of like how difficult it was to get into the acting industry. You know, you don't make any money. So I had this, this feeling like if I pursued my dreams and goals in theater, acting, the arts, that I'd be poor, that I'd be in poverty. And I remember that I was, because I was always very um, scholastically inclined, I work hard at everything I do. That's just who I am. I'm like, if you're going to do something, you give it your all or don't do it at all. So I was pretty decent in math and science growing up and in high school, um, kind of got this inkling like, well, if you could be a doctor, then you could have money, then you could have resources. Because my entire life, I, I, I had like comments that were made like throughout um, family, friends, in the household, hey, money doesn't grow on trees. Um, make sure you have this or wait till I get paid or, you know, just growing up like in this whole state of lack. So I pursued a healthcare career because I was like, oh, in healthcare, I'll always have money. You know, people are always getting sick. I'll be the first doctor in my family, all that type of thing. Um, senior year of college, realized like, again, th there was that ding, ding, ding. Didn't fully listen to it, only half listened to it. 
I don't even like any of this stuff. Like this really is not, I'm not into the, the blood guts, biology, all that type of stuff, even though that I was graduating with a degree in biology. So I did not take the MCAT. I did not go to, so I did not apply for medical school. So I was like, okay, I have this degree in biology. What's next? So I heard of healthcare administration. I was like, oh, okay, I can do something business and um, healthcare related. And that was my way of combining the two. Fast forward to almost a decade in this career, I'm still feeling unfulfilled. I'm still feeling like, oh, I wish I was doing something again, back to where my interests were in arts and in creation and that type of thing, creating different types of artistic projects. Mm -hmm. 2020 happened, working in a hospital, pandemic hit, and I saw so much death. And it was then that my own livelihood flashed before my eyes. I'm like, what are you doing? People are leaving here left and right. And people have always been dying. They didn't just start dying in the pandemic, but I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it. I'm observing it firsthand. And there was a patient that was the same age as me, was African-American and was had a C2 spinal injury, paralyzed from the neck down. And I remember them, you know, making the, the, the statement like, hey, my life is over. And I'm thinking you got so much more life to live, but you're living yours like your life is over. So I, I, I knew I needed a reset. Yeah, yeah. You know, that is so amazing, so true. We all come to a crossroads. I think the pandemic did it for a lot of us. Um, mine was actually even a little bit before that because I, the, the, the doctor, you know, I've always tried to stay in a little bit of shape. And um, the doctor came to me and told me that I was actually uh, pre-diabetic and you're going to, we're going to put you on insulin. And that was not just a wake-up call for, um, for, for health and to reverse that. But for me, I've always had the creativity. And kind of like you, it was severely suppressed in my household, severely suppressed. Uh, you know, you know, it was interesting. Um, just one, one little story. Um, the, the Conan the Barbarian uh, character really resonated with me, but I really resented how the author portrayed persons of color. So years ago, uh, I actually began to create and write my own stories. And I was on that draw of the world and everything else. And um, uh, my parent would come in, what's this? It's jump, jump, jump. I mean, literally tear it up, you know, throw it up. And, and, uh, and so, you know, imagine how that would make you feel because you put your heart and soul into a creation. But on the other hand, when I would do a story at, at school and the teacher calls my mom up and says, there's no way that he could have come up with something like this. Where'd he get it? Because I was that good, she got offended. <laughs> you know, she got offended that the teacher wouldn't believe that I had the talent, but did not want to, you know, harness or shape, mold, really direct, encourage the talent. You know, and a lot of times um, those things happen when your 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 abilities are suppressed for the sake of practicality, reality. Or what people say is practicality or reality. You know, I like to say that reality is a funny thing. Everyone has their own. So tell me something. When you reached that course, so you said, what are you doing? What steps did you take at that point? And, and what did you, what, 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 what was the first things that you said, the, the first steps that you took that made your, made, made your folks or your family say, wait a minute, hold on, what are you doing? I want to preface that question with the initial feeling I had was fear. Mm -hmm. So it was a fear as well as a reckoning with myself. I believe we all know. I believe we all know what our dreams, what we're interested in, what we have skill sets with, what we're gifted with. Now, will you give yourself permission? The first thing I felt was, was fear. And the first thing I started doing, because I'm, I'm a very like logical person. I'm like, okay, what do you do? And another thing that came in my mind was like my age. I'm thinking, 
have to start over. Oh my gosh, I have to start over. What do I do? Um, I reached out to someone who also worked for the same company I was. And I expressed like everything I was going on, someone that I felt like was just a, a comfortable, safe space. And I said, you know, right now I feel like I only have two options. I can quit and have like nothing where I, that I'm going to, because I've never quit my job and not had something else lined up or the, or the next um, opportunity. Or I could just stay here and keep going through the motion. And what she said to me, I will never forget. She said, if you stay and keep going through the motion, you will resent yourself. You will, you will be filled with regrets. She said, the reason you called me, you already knew the answer. Mm. You, you just wanted somebody to confirm it. Or here's your confirmation. She said, you already know what the answer is. You do what you need to do. Yes. So that was step one. Um, I, I received that confirmation. Um, I prayed about it. I reached out to my parents. I'm like, hey, I, this is what's going through my mind. I don't have a plan. I don't know how this works out. I just know that I feel like it's now. And I don't even say, I, I hate the phrase now. Or never, that's how I feel. Like I, like, I have to jump. I have to leap. And I have to have the faith that once I leap, you know, he won't let me drown and by he, I mean, God, he will not let me drown. If, if this is something, you know, I, I, I heard someone say this before and it's so powerful where there's vision. There's also provision. The vision wasn't of what exactly was next. The vision was, I got you. God said, I got you. So there will be provision. Mm-hmm. So that was the biggest thing. So I, I literally packed up everything Mm-hmm. and moved like within a month of me getting all, and I moved back home. So I was living in Phoenix, Arizona, and I moved back to uh, Southwest Georgia where, that, uh, where that's home um, with my parents without a plan, without a clue. Um, really the, the only plan and clue that I had was like, I have my parents who love me, who will support me. And first and foremost, God has never failed me and he's not going to stop now. Now, what that looks like, I had no idea. Right, right. You know, that's that's the thing is, you know, I was, um, I don't know if you've heard of Dr. Joe Dispenza, but um, there's him and then you have a few others out there and they talk, they, they it's, it's kind of strange that the, the times that we're living in because they, um, you know, they, they, they're, they're moving from almost from the scientific to almost the side of mystical uh, aspect of reality. But in between them, they bring up this idea of the quantum field. And one way or another, everything that a person can imagine is somehow there. You know, you've heard that phrase, the law of attraction, right? Well, it's interesting that, well, you know, let's say in the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. So the material world, the, all the matter and energy has been here for aeons. So every possibility and probability already exists. It's just a matter of finding the combination to the rock, you know? And so when we embark on our journey, just like you and I have embarked on our journey, we are now moving and shifting those combinations and now and to the point where we reach the reality that is there that we, that we fit in so to speak yeah. and i think that's so powerful how do you confront your fears hmm. how do that's you- a good question uh one of the things that i'm learning to do to confront fears is to write it on paper Mm. and to find the lie, Mm. to find the lie. And most of the time it's the lie I'm telling myself. That that's been, that's been powerful for me because there's, we all have this, what I call inner chatter, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Most of it is, is, is negative. And you see, uh, you see kind of like the commercials or the videos where they have like the angel sitting on one side and the devil sitting on, on the other side. And 
the African proverb is about, well, which one is bigger? And it's like the one you feed. Yes. So when, when I, when I figure out like, Hey, where's the lie in this? Is this truth? Is this something that I, you know, I've, I've heard, I've, I've seen, and now I'm telling myself and I'm replaying it over and over and over again. And another thing too, is, you know, when, when you, when you're able to recognize a lie, you're also able to say like, yeah, like, is this, is this scriptural base? Is this factual base? Or is this just something that has been out in the atmosphere that has been going on and on and on and on and on? Mm -hmm. And now I've accepted it. I've ingested that inside of me. So that's been the biggest thing that I did and putting it on paper and dissecting it, like going word for word. Okay. And also to asking yourself, where, where did you hear this from? How did you arrive here? Why do you think that? Like asking questions to the lie. And I mean, and, and it, I mean, it's, it's, it's almost kind of like an out of body experience when you do some of these things. Cause you're like, Ooh, so I've, I've been, I've been allowing that to bother me this entire time, but it, it, it's been powerful. And this is like, again, this, I, I love to say everything is like a practice and it's a journey. And these are steps because it's not an overnight thing because even like are like arriving to the point that this entire thing you've been telling yourself is a lie. Like this whole thing when I told you, when I mentioned earlier, like, oh my gosh, I have to start over. Mm -hmm. I'm not starting over. I'm applying all of those 20 years of experience of life in a new area, in a new arena, in a new atmosphere, in a new discipline. I'm not starting. So even that I realized, oh, that's a lie you were telling yourself. There's this whole fear. You're oh my gosh, I'm starting from scratch. I'm starting over. I don't know what I'm doing. No, you're coming with all of this experience now. But I had to recognize that that was a lie. And I had to break down each little piece and component of that lie for, for me to arrive at my own piece. Indeed. So when you work as a journalist for the people. How do you bring your experiences and, and, and expose the fallacies that people are facing day to day? I love that you asked that. So one of the things I am super um, proud of that uh, my team and I have been able to create is the podcast Reset with Raven. Mm -hmm. And by having conversations with people, one of my goals is, is to end suffering in silence. And a lot of our suffering comes from lies we tell ourselves. So having these conversations with experts and, and by experts, people with experience, that's where that word comes from, right? Experience in different fields, experience in life. We're able to discuss, have have in-depth conversations about things that people have been through. And my goal for the podcast, for my platform, just this, this opportunity that I have is to, for, for, for people to see like, you're not the only one going through that. You're not the only one experiencing that. There's a lot of, um, I just had a, a guest that's coming on um, the podcast and it hasn't been released yet, but we were talking about loneliness mm. and there, there's a lot of like, oh, I'm alone. It's like, are you really alone? Or do you have, you know, people, resources, tools around you, but, you know, you have this in your mind and you have this in your head. So I want to challenge what people think. I want to challenge some of the lies that are out in society. One of the biggest things that is super cool to me is like, you have what they call highlights, right? Highlights on social media, especially you see them on Instagram or IG, where people show all of the great things that are happening in their life. I'm on vacation. I just bought a new car. Um, I just got a job promotion. I'm in love with the love of my life. I want to expose behind the highlights behind all this stuff that, cause that's just a snapshot. And you have people right now who are depressed. You have people right now who, that are the same ones posting these highlights. You have people right now who are aspiring and working to be people that, that we see on TV, social media. And that's not even some of their real lives. Mm -hmm. So we're, I, I'm exposing it by bringing it to the light. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Is, it, is this true? Is this real? And, and even if it is real, wonderful that they're having a great life. That doesn't mean that that's supposed to be your life. And, and one of the things we were talking about right before we um, hit record is just, you know, your, your 
your assignment is not for everybody or everyone is not up under your assignment and recognizing that. So I want to have these conversations because my assignment is to discuss these things and to talk about things that people maybe whisper about, things people hold in, maybe conversations people have with, you know, their friends, their homegirls, their homeboys, but they wouldn't dare talk about it in public. Let's talk about it. People have all this stuff trapped up inside of them. And I think that's all of this stuff. When you have, so as my daddy says, better out than in. When you can release some of this baggage, when you, can you, when you can release some of these fallacies and fears that we just talked about, it's freeing for people. So that's how I'm exposing things through so these conversations just like this. What are the most common falsehoods that you've confronted and exposed? Mm. I would say that I'm the only one experiencing this. Mm. One of the things that has been powerful to see and and to see like to, to get feedback of like the ripples that we're able to create with these conversations is people who privately message me. Hey, thanks for talking about that. Yes. Or I'm glad you shared that. Or uh, people that don't ever like, don't ever comment, but will text me and say, hey, I watched this episode on such and such and such. That was for me. Mm-hmm. You never know who you're touching or who you're reaching through these platforms. And the biggest thing that... Um, I found that I've been able to expose is that a lot of times there's a lot of isolation. So we have the social media, right? We have social media, we have all of the technology, yet people are very isolated. Yes, very much so. And there's this thought like, oh, I'm depressed, I'm the only one. Oh, I hate my job, I'm the only one. Or I went through, you know, I have, I have some some very triggering topics coming up soon with uh, people that have been sex trafficked, um, people that have been in foster care, those type of things. Mm-hmm. And, and there's shame mm-hmm. around it. So let's talk about it. And for people that are not there or ready to talk about it, now they can have some information, some tools, some resources, and a contact who they can reach out to. Mm-hmm when they're in that place of shame and guilt and or fear. How do you help others to transition like you've transitioned? Myself, I've run into a, quite a few of my clients or individuals who are, like I like to say, in a state of becoming. <clears throat> That's why my company is called Chrysalis Transformational Coaching um, because we're all in that state. but. How do you help individuals to move through their chrysalis and emerge as the butterfly, to keep the metaphor going, that uh, they were intended to become? That's a great question. So I have a mentorship program um, that's on activatethedream.com where I talk to people and I work one-on-one and I also do um, professional um, public speaking, where I work with people as well, where I work with groups. Uh, my target audience um, has been a lot of young professionals as well as colleges um, and schools, because that's I think, a great place to reach people when they're at that um, stage in their life. And I feel like I'm seeing and hearing and experience more and more um, people with that quarter life crisis or that 30-year-old 30, 30 um, cri- crisis. There's a book that's called Oh. I'll, I'll use the, the other term, oh crap, I'm 30. So that's a, I have different programs that I've set up where I work with people one-on-one as well as groups um, to help them through that, that transition. Because I'm also, I uh, did mention that too, but I'm also a, a certified professional coach as well. So been through um, coaching training and program as well. Nice, nice. So many of the things that uh, we probably have in common is the way, the process we take our clients through. And that's what I try to do. Um, you know, I've, I was just on the uh, on, on a call with a, a upcoming guest, a doctor. She's um, amazing. Oh my God, she's, she's, she's a doctor, she's a sheriff, she's a black belt. She's, in, I mean, I think she's, I think she works for the CIA, I don't know. You know, she's just, you know, one of those amazing people and she's so full of life. But, you know, we talked about the fact that um, 
that stuff like metabolic syndrome, type 2 diabetes or insulin resistance, which is what it really is, are lifestyle issues as opposed to just health issues. And one of the things I do when I work with my clients is I take them through the process of examining and then re-examining where they are in life, the, the things that they do that can contribute to both their physical health, but as well as their mental and emotional health, because they're all tied together. When you get upset, what happens? Your glucose rises, right? When you're pretty chill, it's gone down. You're right. So all of those things I do. So I I work with mindset first, and then I work with also the activities and the foods and things like that. But you know, it's so important as you say, and to have those programs in place to help individuals. You know, and I want to circle back to something you had mentioned before about those that don't get you, right? You know, there are those that don't get you. And, you know, tell me something. You're from Georgia. Are you, are you a country girl or a city girl? <laughs> so I live in the country. I live, like, in the woods. I live in the country. But, like, I feel like I'm not, I don't know, I'm not country-esque. Like, for for example, it's like, like with snakes and spiders and all that kind of stuff. I'm like, I'm, I'm not built for that. That's not my ministry. That's not my ministry. People are like, but don't you live in the world? I, I am, but I, I no, that's not for me. Um, I, I, I need the, the young man, my father, somebody. I, nope, that's not for me. But I am uh, from Southwest Georgia and, and live in the country. <laughs> well, the reason why I asked that now, now I'm bringing you up to this, to get to the next step. The, are you a, a, do you like country or do you like R&B or hip hop or what? Ooh, I love music. So, um, and I love lots of genres. Um, I love jazz. Jazz, jazz may be my my favorite. I, I love R and B. I love gospel. I I feel like I don't. I I if I heard a country song. I'd be like, oh okay. And like some of the uh, more famous like uh, country artists that are on CMT. If you said their name. I'm like, oh, okay, I've heard some of their stuff, but I don't know that I like just binge on country music. But if I'm literally like lying in bed and I just need something to relax me, I'll probably listen to some jazz. I'll even listen to classical um, or, or probably gospel. Those three things like put me in a state of like relaxation. Hip hop, if I'm going to a party, I guess it depends on, you know, where I'm going or what am I trying to do? If I'm trying to go to sleep, is, is the, the jazz and the classical. If mm -hmm. I'm getting ready for something and I, you know, get need to get in the mood to get excited, I'm going to listen to some hip hop, maybe even some, you know, some rap just to get hyped for the event. It depends on what I'm doing. <laughs> well, you know, that's the thing about it, though. Yeah, I noticed you mentioned, though, uh, a, a number of different song genres and tonalities. Now, when you mentioned, when it came to mentioning country music, you know this, you know a few of those, you can kind of figure it out a little bit. But what resonates with you is the jazz. This speaks to your city side, by the way. But <laughs> what resonates with you is the R&B. What resonates with you is the gospel. And that's kind of like the way it is with people and like and what we do. There are artists and writers who have written in such a way that I could be six years old and not know what in the heck they're talking about in reality, but it resonates with me. Mm -hmm. I have a vision. There are individuals who write a great song, I know exactly what they're talking about, it's a great song, I know it's gonna be a hit, and I can't stand the song. Well, that's the way it is with people and, um, and, 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 and their own personal vision. It's the song that resonates with you, and, with, and it's the song that resonates 
with those who are kindred spirits with you. Folks that are saying, trying to still figure you out, trying to know what you're doing, and then try to criticize it, that's not their song. <laughs> that's good. That's not their song. <laughs> not their song. You see? So you can go ahead and give them their symbol and stand in the corner. <laughs> you know? Me, I'm going to grab my guitar and strum. Oh, goodness. Crank up a little bit of, crank up the amplifier and, and, and kick in some Jimi Hendrix on or something. You know what I mean? But that's what I would do. But that's not everyone. So that comes to that acceptance that brings it right back to our own realities and, uh, and accepting ourselves for the truth of ourselves mm -hmm. as opposed to the lies we tell ourselves. Mm. You know, as I really value that. What are your goals and plans for this beautiful gem of an organization that you started? Where are you? What are? What's, what's your next level move? Oh, next level move. Uh, well, definitely, I want to author a book. I'm still thinking about what I want the theme of that book. Because I have a lot of. Um, stories I can tell, a lot of information I think that would be helpful for people. So that's definitely um, in the future. I'd love to do a TED Talk. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, anytime I do something, though, I, I want to make sure that um, it has impact. So not just like, oh, okay, well, I want to write a book. And it's like, okay, what, what do people need? So that, so I'm, I'm still in the process of thinking about that. Same thing with the pitching the TED Talk. Um, and then reset, reset means a lot to me. I've, I've gone through um, several resets of my own. Um, and I always say a reset is always available to you. So I, I'm still thinking about what, how I want that to show up, whether that is a, a conference, whether that's a retreat. Uh, but I, I know people need resets throughout their lives. Um, and, and one of the things you mentioned earlier was, you know, start by examining where you are. That's part of the reset too. Like to, to, to know, okay, where am I right now? And then as you just eloquently asked me, where, where are you trying to go? What's important to you? So um, there's a lot of things right now that um, are, are on my um, vision board. Um, I won't give them all away, but there's a lot of things that I'm thinking about. Um, and, but I want to make sure it's what I'm purposed to do and that will be uh, meaningful and impactful for people. Because, you know, I, I could write a book, I could do a talk, but I, I want it to be something that I know people need. Because um, I know there's a lot of, as I talked about, there's a lot of pain and suffering. Mm -hmm. So whatever I put out, I wanted to make sure that it's poignant and it, it's, it's um, timely and it really, it really helps people. And, and it gives that hope and inspiration and not just hope and inspiration, but actual um, tactical things they can do for their lives. That is so amazing and so beautiful. And that's the great thing about doing this type of work. You know, um, at, my, at my day job, I'm more introverted and my job requires me to be focused anyway and not be inundated with folk, which is cool for me because I like to get stuff done. But it, it really expands my energies in ways that I would prefer that they didn't because I have more of that creative side and, and the desire to put things together um, or in, in a literary sense or in a, in a, in a um, media type of way. That's, that's one of the things I've always done. I've, you know, it's always been part of me. You see, so I really enjoy that. And I think um, I look forward to working with you perhaps in the future on a couple of projects. We'll see how things go. But, um, you know, as one who is a catalyst for, for change, one who is an exposer of these lies we tell ourselves, as one who's um, moving towards self-fulfillment and, and still in the state of self-discovery, I have to commend you for the for the journey so far, and um, we look forward to seeing you continuing to move even further. So that said, I ask this last question of all of my guests. So I'm going to ask you now. 
Michelle, Raven Michelle Harris, what does it mean to you to crush your mountain? It means to trust yourself. Mm. And if you don't think you know, get quiet and be still and ask for discernment. That means to trust yourself. We already know, we, ha we have the information. We have the information inside. You have to give yourself permission to receive that information. And oftentimes it can't be received when there's chaos and noise. So get quiet and be still. Wow. That was so powerful. And you were worried you were going to be, you wouldn't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> Friends, that brings up an entire conversation about meditation and, and, and mindfulness and things like that. And we don't have time for all that. But I will tell you, we will have you back again. And you know, speaking of resets and stuff like that, next time I get a chance to be on your program, I've got a ton of resets to share. And we'll talk about a couple of them. And, uh, and, and uh, in the meantime, though, I just want to tell you again to keep happening. And, and friends, if you would like to touch base with Miss Raven Michelle Harris, and I just like to call her Raven. I think that's such a beautiful name. You will find her on Instagram. You'll find her on Facebook. You'll find her. Um, she has her email on her website. And you can find her at activatethedream.com. That's her website. Be sure to get there and, um, and, and uh, it, it's touch base with her. Find out what she's doing. I guarantee you you will benefit. Even if you spend about 15 minutes or so, you will benefit from the gems of this young lady. In the meantime, like I always say, don't just climb your mountain, crush through it. We'll see you next time. Thank you so much, Raven. Thank you.